On this section, I'll be covering measures of variation. And more specifically, I'll be focusing on the range. So we've, we've um, looked at measures of center before. And the measures of center gives us a good summary about the data. But let's say that the mean of a certain set of data is 90. And let's consider two different uh, sets of data. On one side, we have a student who got 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, all 90s on his math test. On a second, on the second case, let's say that uh, we have a 60, a 90, a 100, 100, and 100. Now, these two data sets are clearly different. On one case, we have a student who got all 90s. On the other case, the student got a really bad score at first, but then made up for that score later on with 300s. Uh, but both of these data sets give you the same mean. They're both 90. So mean just by itself is not a very good reflection on the data set. And that's why we also use measures of variation in addition to measures of center. So by the word variation, you can, you can tell that it's measuring how different the data is within the data set. So a range is a very simple way to calculate that. And to get the range, you just simply do the maximum minus the minimum. So in our first set of data here, they're all 90. So the maximum minus the minimum is just going to be 0. So the range is 0 for the first set of data. When the range is 0, you can automatically know that all the data has to be the same because the maximum and the minimum are the same. That's the only way that their difference is zero. For our second set of data here, the range is 100 minus 60, which is 40. So even though they have the same mean, by looking at the range, you can tell that they are very two different or very different uh, two data sets. So that's why we also use measures of variation. And there are more ways to measure uh, variation in a data set. Range is just the simplest way to do that.